let's make an extra large chunky super soft thick plush chunky blanket we're going to be using 10 skeins of yarn for this chunky blanket this is definitely the biggest blanket i have ever made and it is so warm and so cozy I recently took a trip to Maine to visit really good friends as they were opening up their very own store. Amazing artist and amazing friend Kasha, family, friends, and her husband. And what I thought would be super fun while I was visiting is we made chunky blankets. I'll leave her store and channel in my description box below. But as friends, we had a blast making chunky blankets together. But the one reason I wanted to kind of show you a quick clip of what we were doing is it really helped me identify what it is that can be a little bit confusing when we watch a tutorial on two dimension of learning how to make them. And it was really just at the beginning of the blanket and getting the actual foundation work going that really helped me figure out how I could make this tutorial a lot easier to follow and kind of point out where it's very easy to make mistakes. But either way, we had so much fun and we accomplished in just a couple of hours two gorgeous blankets. So it is really easy to make these and super fun, especially when you do it with a friend. Barnett Big Blanket is a polyester chenille, which is actually machine washable. So let's start with a slip knot. And the first thing I do is I kind of create a half circle around my fingers. I pull the working yarn through and now I've made a loop. Now the big thing that I've always noticed even through comments in previous videos is loop size. The angle is when you're making a chain to start your blanket is you want to make sure that your loops are kind of loose because we're going to be stitching into these loops. So kind of aim for perhaps maybe about that three inches, maybe three and a half inches when you start your chain. So what I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to practice first. So I'm going to chain 12 loops. The reason I wanted to do this practice size is to visually show you from the beginning to the end and this way we can really focus on areas that can get a little bit confusing. So I've made 10 loops so far, I'm just going to add two more. Once I have 12 on this chain, then I'm going to show you a few tricks. So now that I've completed 12 loops on a chain, I'm just counting to confirm I have 12. I want to show you a few tricks here. First thing I notice people will make a mistake is they try to actually stitch into that first bump because that's actually where we're going to make our stitches in these top bumps. But you can't really do it in the first top bump because the end loop is actually a stitch. And I'll show you what I mean. This was the first thing I noticed that Kasha had done when we made blankets that can seem very confusing. So you're not gonna go into that first bump because as you can see, it just kind of falls into itself. But that last loop is actually the first stitch and I'll get into that in just a minute. You're actually going in to the first bump beside that stitch. So we actually have two stitches right now, one and two. So we're gonna keep going across on that chain going into that top bump of the chain. And I'm also going to show you how to remember that. So going forward, we're just going to stick our finger into that top bump of the chain and we're going to pull the working yarn through, adding a new row of stitches across our chain. Now the other thing is making sure that your loops are actually going to be about two and a half inches, whereas the chain, they were about three. So this way, your chain won't be too tight and your blanket kind of V's, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. So I'm gonna chain on my first row and I'm gonna go back and count them to make sure I have 12. So now that I have my chain and my first row, I'm just going to recount and make sure that I have my 12 stitches. But the one thing to identify is just to make it easy, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 
So I have my 12 and to make this really easy and that I identified working along with a friend is those two end stitches. Just think of those two end stitches as border stitches. So those are going to make the border of the blanket. The other thing I always do is make sure my working yarn is now going in the direction I'm going to be working. So I'm going to go from left to right. So this first stitch going into my second row is actually going to be a border stitch, also referred to as a knit stitch. So you pull the yarn from behind the loop. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do two. And what makes this pattern really easy is we're going to actually work in sections of two. So I did two knit stitches. So they're pulling the yarn from the back. Now I'm doing two purl stitches. So I'm pulling the yarn from the front. So I'm going to go from the back. Again, that's called the knit stitch, but I call it a back stitch. Then I'm going to be pulling the working yarn in front. And this is a purl stitch, which I refer to as a front stitch. And again, we're going in sections of two. That's the beautiful thing about this pattern is you're going to be working in sections of two. Now we got to that end stitch that we first started with. Now we're going to be picking it up. And again, those two end stitches are border stitches and they're always that knit stitch, which is the one we go from the back to the front. Now I'm going back as my second row here and I'm just doing the same thing that we just saw. Again, those end stitches, again, think of those as border stitches. Don't think of them as your part of your pattern. They're always going to be that taking the yarn from the back, that knit stitch. So going forward, I'm going in sections of two. I'm now going to do two knit stitches. Now I'm going to do two purl stitches, two front stitches. And again, I try to place that working yarn in the direction I'm going. So I'm going from left to right again. As I go down this row, I'm going to do those two purl stitches. Now I'm going to do those two knit stitches. And then now I'm going to get to that border stitch. And again, that is always a knit stitch. The reason it's always a knit stitch is because we are chain that we started with and how we're going to close this blanket. We want it to all look uniform and to be the same. So it's going to look almost like a frame braid all the way around. The other thing you want to be careful of that I noticed when I was working with a friend making these is make sure that your loops are always sitting straight. Sometimes they want to twist a little bit. So really be careful of that one as well. This is all just repetition. And once you do a sample, you'll actually feel so much more confident about going into the full size blanket. So again, I'm always referring to that end stitch as my border stitch, which is always going to be the knit stitch. So I kind of calculated a little bit differently by marking the two end stitches as border stitches. And then I calculate two, whether it be purl, knit, purl, knit, in the center. So I'm kind of working the pattern with the 10 stitches in the middle and then the two ends which calculate 12 are my border stitches. So I'm just going to keep going back and again I'm going from left to right as I'm going back to the right side. I'm going to pick up that border stitch and you'll notice that border stitch is always going to be almost a row below the stitch you're working on but you're always going to be picking up that border stitch when you come back. And then the other thing I noticed again working with a friend side by side is making sure that when you're pulling up your stitches is they're about two and a half inches because it's the size of the loops that you're making will actually help the circumference and shape of your entire blanket as well. So you really it's really really important and even I do it, especially when I want to learn a new pattern, is to practice. So I'm only using one skein of yarn just to make a practice sample. And it just helps me refresh and make sure I'm getting my loops about the same size, making sure that chain is a little bit looser than the rest of my stitches. So again, this makes a nice squared uniformed blanket. But this yarn is so super thick, it stitches up extremely fast. 
So as we keep repeating and growing up the sample blanket, you'll notice I just did the border stitch. It kind of sits to the side a little bit. And again, it's just part of the framing of the whole blanket. And now I'm gonna go from right to left, but I will show you in the big blanket exactly what I did. And I'm also gonna even share exactly how I started it and all of the number details for the giant blanket. But again, I just really wanted to show on a small little sample so you could visually see what's going on and it's just easier to film to get all of that visual. So now that I just finished that border stitch, which is that knit stitch, and as you can see, it kind of falls suit and it makes kind of this frame as we keep growing and making more rows and continue on. Really identifying those two end stitches as framework really helped out a beginner. So that was really helpful when I made the blankets with Kasha. So I'm just going again from left to right and I'm repeating. But the other thing I noticed, and even through previous comments on other blankets that I've made, is making sure that your loops are around the same size. Because what can happen is sometimes if that chain is a little too tight, and then as you're growing in the blanket, what's gonna start to happen is the blanket's gonna start to kind of go into a bit of a V and it's getting a little bit wider. So it makes the beginning chain look too tight. And then by the time we get to the top, it's a little too loose. So again, this is why I really put a lot of emphasis to trying one actual roll or skein of yarn and just make a little practice sample and then you'll be good to go and all exercised for the giant extra large blanket. So this pattern is referred to as a ribbed stitch. And visually it's very, very interesting. It kind of gives a lot more texture to the blanket but it's super beginner friendly. It looks the same on both sides, so both front and back will actually look the same, which is really nice about this particular pattern. One thing I do is kind of pull the blanket a little bit. I kind of pull it widthwise and lengthwise. So to close the blanket, you always wanna make sure that you leave yourself a little extra. So I try to put at least two to three rows based on the width of the blanket left over. So make sure that you have that amount before you use up the whole skein of yarn. So this will help so you have enough yarn to close it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one loop and two loop and you're gonna sandwich that together. You're gonna pull the working yarn through both. And when you do that, you're, that's where you're gonna need a little extra yarn because these actual stitches to close and cast off your blanket are going to be a little bit longer because you've got more yarn. So again, you're going to take two, sandwich them together, take the next stitch and the stitch you have in your hand, sandwich them together, pull the working yarn through and stretch over. So I kind of aim for around a four inch loop as I'm closing. So you're always going to have a loop and then you're gonna pick up one, sandwich it together, pull through. And you're just gonna go all the way to the end. When you get to the end, you're gonna have one stitch, you're gonna cut the yarn and pull it through the loop and make a knot. I'm not going to because I'm actually gonna be unraveling this to add to the big giant blanket that I made. And I'm gonna show you some fine details I did with that big giant one that I made. So now that you can see, it almost looks like a braid all the way around the blanket. So this really kind of shows you in a smaller version what that giant blanket will look like when we get into the bigger version of it and how it creates a border all the way around. So we have a little tail from when we started our chain and this will apply to when we finish the blanket, you'll have a little tail. So what I do is I just make an extra secured knot and any of the remainder, you can either cut it off, but generally I just weave it in because again, this is such a big bulky yarn, you're not gonna see it. And once you weave it in, it stays intact. So yes, this yarn is machine washable and dryable, but I usually just wash it, lay it flat to dry, and then fluff it in the dryer for maybe 15, 20 minutes. 
So this sample size would be that of maybe for a pet or a baby blanket and it's actually 20 inches by 20 inches and I didn't actually use the entire skein of yarn. I actually have a bunch left over. But I'm going to pull this apart and I'm actually going to start my giant super big plush blanket. And the first thing I did was I chained 34 loops. So that was the start number I did for my giant blanket. My loops are about three, three and a half inches as I created the chain. So the whole width of my start chain was about four and a half feet. So again, when we start the blanket, and again, it was so wonderful when I got to make the blanket when I was visiting with Kasha, that it really showed that this was a predominant spot that was easy to get confused. So we don't wanna do that. What we do wanna remember is each stitch at the very end, so the right very last stitch and the very last stitch on the left are border stitches. So this stitch right there, that is actually gonna count as a stitch, but we're gonna go into the following bump right beside it, and that's where we're gonna pull up our first row of stitches from the chain. And remember how I mentioned that the chain itself should be about three, three and a half inches per loop? As I'm pulling up my next row of, or my first row of actual stitches, we want to make those about two and a half inches. So again, really important that your chain is not looped too tight, or that's going to kind of make the shape of the blanket a little bit uneven. So as I'm going, I'm doing two front stitches, two back stitches. Again, they're referred to as two knit stitches. So what I'm doing right here is a knit stitch. Then I'm gonna do a purl stitch, which again, I refer to as a front stitch. The last stitch on each end of the blanket, we're gonna refer those as our border stitches. And again, those are always knitted. So that way it looks like a nice even braid all the way around the blanket. So I'm gonna keep going and build this, but I'm actually working off a table right now and I'm gonna move this to the floor. If for any reason sitting on the floor is just super uncomfortable, I even recommend to do this on your bed so that way the blanket and as you're building up stays in the same spot and it's just easier to work from. So the floor or the bed will really help. But as you can see, I did that border stitch, that end stitch, and then I'm just gonna keep carrying on. So the other common thing is making sure that you know how to attach from one skein to another. I just make a knot. And again, because this is super bulky, you're not gonna see that knot. That knot circumference is about the same as the actual yarn. So you're not even gonna see the little bump because again, it's almost the same width as the actual yarn itself. So again, I'm just doing those sections of two. That's what makes this pattern so easy to follow, is two front stitches, two back stitches. Right now I'm just doing two front stitches, then I'm gonna carry to do two back stitches. So now that I've laid it out on the floor, and now I can carry on, but as you can see, Hatley's gonna join me. So this blanket will stitch up relatively quickly. It only took me an afternoon, about maybe five to six hours to make this giant blanket. But sometimes this has happened to me where I'm kind of just going along and I didn't realize until I got into the next row above that I made a mistake on how I did the pattern stitch. So I ended up doing almost six knit stitches right across when I should have done two knit stitches, two purl stitches. So if you don't catch that, you can see that it'll kind of break the pattern a little bit, but you can fix it even knowing it was the row below. So don't unravel it. All you're going to do is pull the stitch out and you're gonna put the stitch on top. So as you can see, you can just reverse that stitch 
if it was actually made the wrong way. It's very easy to make that mistake in a blanket this size. So I just wanna show you that you can fix that. And of course, if it's the reverse, you just pull it the other way. The other thing I do, especially when I'm working on the floor and I start to run out of room, I just fold the blanket maybe once, sometimes twice, and then I'm just gonna pull it back and this will give me more room. And what's really nice about this part is you can actually just sit on what you've already knitted and it's super comfortable. So it's like making your own cushion and then you can keep knitting. I definitely take several breaks when I make a blanket that's quite large. And as I mentioned, this is the largest one I've made to date. So this is not a race, but in total for the amount of time I actually sat and did it to create this size was probably about five to six hours. But these make beautiful gifts. So what I've decided to do is make this as a Christmas gift for my sister. But definitely nothing wrong with making one for yourself. And as you can see, Gabriel's like, no, I think maybe we should keep this. So again, the pattern is so easy. Just remember, you always want an even number. So I did 34, but if you wanted to do something a little bit smaller, start with maybe 24 or 26, as long as it's an even number and the pattern will work out beautifully. The other thing that's really cool is it could actually be a rug because it's so thick and so big. So this turned out to be seven feet in length and then the width was about four and a half, almost five feet once I got the bulk on. When I started the chain, it was exactly four and a half, but once we put some weight and bulk onto it, it stretched it out a little bit to about four and a half, almost five feet. Thank you so much for joining me in this week's video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I have so many more fun DIYs to share with you soon. Until then, take care.